and you have a book, uh, an e-book called There's No Shortcut of an Ego. What do you mean by that? Well, when, when our uh, mind, which is a computer, is running the same script over and over because it relied on it from a very young age, and that, those can be very bad messages, but if they kept you alive, at 3, 4, 5, 10, 15, and they're now outdated. They're in conflict with your soul, with the way that God has designed for you to live. And there's a dissonance between the two when the, the pressure gets really intense between your way of thinking and what is, what is healthy and true, that consciousness that, that comes from that intangible space. Right. There's an eruption. And you, you can't avoid it if it's predestined for you. And I do believe that God has certain destinies for each of us. And if your destiny is over here and that destiny requires you to abort a certain way of, of thought, you, there, and, and God is moving you here no matter what, God will cripple your life to make sure that you abort that thought and merge with the consciousness that's been designed for you. Amazing. Um... So the ego, is it a thought or is there something else going on too? It's a pattern of thought. And does feeling come with the ego? Feelings. You know, like sadness. Thoughts worry, produce feelings. We, we always think before we feel. Right. I noticed yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> all, all thoughts, all lies, all the time? Our thoughts lies all the time. It depends if it's, if it's an unhealthy uh, ego pattern it's, and it's, it's probably a lie if it's causing you strife. Is it possible to have a good thought? Yes. And how would you know when you have a good thought since the devil is so deceiving? And how would you know if you have a good thought? A good thought is devoid of attachment. So if I have a thought about something, it's a good thought, but it's a neutral thought. Negative thoughts come with a tremendous amount of attachment and, and, and compulsion, almost. Attachment meaning what? Attachment to outcome, attachment to what surrounds that thought. Oh, I see. So if you think of a beautiful home, and if you attach yourself to that, get a sense of identity from it, then that's a bad thought. If, you ha if that's your source of identity, versus just joy that might, you know, neutrally come from a series of actions. Right. It's, it's how you feel and it's what emphasis, it's the reason why. Why do we want or need certain things? Do human beings create their own thoughts? Absolutely. And how do human beings do that exactly? Starts when we're little. Um, so whatever we're around uh, programs us like a computer, and when those computer systems, that hard drive starts to short circuit because it's not lining up with our destiny, which is part of our soul and our consciousness, that's when the trouble uh, ensues, and that's often when people have injuries, illnesses, and so forth. So if human beings create their own thoughts, why don't they always create good thoughts? Because we, the ego runs on only what it knows, and you can't beat the mind. Meaning what? I, I don't quite understand it. If we're in charge of the thoughts ourselves, for me, I would never create anything but a good thought, something that is positive, quote unquote, or I would never create a thought that would make me feel bad or make me worry or cause me to be sad or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So if I'm, if human beings, I'm in control of my own thoughts, wouldn't I avoid all that? Well, you have access to consciousness. So when somebody has a re repetitive thought that they've been trained on from a, a very young age, it's at war with their, with their consciousness, which is what you're describing as, as you know, creating your own thoughts. So it does take a lot of work, but that's what an ego death is. So absolutely, that ego death can bring you to the next space where you become aware of your own control over your thoughts. But because the mind is such a computer, it's designed to keep you alive with any thought that was there to serve you. It could be a terrible thought. It could be, I need, I, I need to rob this bank. This is how my family survived. I have to do this. I have to do this. And so should we die of the thought? Because, um, oh, yeah, you talk about the ego death. You said there is no 
shortcut out of a dark, dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. It's the dark night of the soul. That's the ego. That comes after the ego death, and it's a period of time. I don't know. Maybe you've experienced this, where it's just blank, and you almost feel that God is absent. And it's a testament, I think, of faith that um, no matter, even if nothing is happening, something is happening, but you don't have any proof. So the ego is the is a death that we have to go through too, right? Yes. And then after that death, death, there's another dark period. There can be. Not all the time. And so sometimes there could not be? Correct. And you're just with the light? Correct. I it's see. haphazard. It's luck of the draw. And so make, make it clear as to how do, how do, how do people let an ego die? How do you let that happen? How should one let that happen? So when those thoughts that have been running in your mind no longer work and you are met with obstacles because of that, there is a feeling state that you have to move into to basically go against the adrenaline that runs from the ego into the body that says you will die if you change your thought. So you have to, in a sense, face death by going against what that ego is telling you and, and sit with that tremendous fear and consider the fact that whatever beliefs I have been running on do not serve me because that ego will send adrenaline to the body that says you will die if you think differently. And you must sit there and feel as, as though you are dying. It's, it's a very internal feeling, but we're so resistant to that. What does it feel like? Utter aloneness, absence, uh, everything around you changes, your friends change, your jobs change, your community might change to accommodate what's on the other side of that computer program ego that's been running for so long. Yeah. So there's a real sense of alone. I talk to a lot of people now uh, because I, I talk about the ego and the ego death. Mm -hmm. And so I, I talk to a lot of men and women who are allowing that to happen. Mm -hmm. And they talk about how difficult it is, how painful they they can barely move or they feel like crying at time or they don't know what to do. And is that what you explain it as well? There's a sense of nothingness and yeah. confusion. It's a blank, it's a blank state. Take everything you you think you know, move it out of the way, and then what do you have? Everyone has told me, those who are going through this have told me that they have lost their friends, they have lost family members. They've lost things as a result. Why do they have to lose something in order to die from the ego? It's physics. So two objects, two individuals have to vibrate at a very similar frequency in order to share space. And emotional and psychological thought is so powerful that when you shift that, everything else around you shifts. Yeah. And, and it happens to be people. So it's a wild phenomenon. I've gone through this several times now. The, the one thing I've noticed about dying from the ego is that um, you lose that attachment to friends, people, places, and things yeah. that you didn't even know you had because you can go through life not being aware that you have an attachment to people, places, and things. Yes. And it's not until you start to die from that ego that you realize, well, I had no idea how attached I was to people, places, and things. And um, have you experienced that? Definitely. But there's also a release that comes with it, I think. And what type of release? There's an emotional release. I think, um, again, if, if we're looking at it in terms of physics and two energies have to match, let's say perhaps your energy is a bit different, but you're dragging that energy along with you and you release that attachment for your own benefit or the greater good, yeah. you've, essentially dropped, you've essentially dropped weight and baggage. And that can be very shocking to see how much more energy <laughs> you might but yeah. it can also happen in marriages yeah. where husband and wife don't relate anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, they never related in, in reality. In the first place. Right. 
So ha how many times have you died of the ego? I don't know. Uh, from it's the a ego. good question. I think there are many ego deaths, and then there are macro ego deaths. So it might be one thought pattern, or it might be an entire concept of yourself and life, or things that you were told that you then find out 30, 40 years later, this one thing that was just beaten into me isn't true. And it's, that's very hard to let go of negative thoughts. Yeah. It's part of you. Yeah. And that's the demon.